So today I'm going to show you guys how to make some fry bread. It's pretty simple. So we start with an even cup of flour. Um, you can use one bowl for it. You don't have to do the wet and dry ingredients. You can put your wet right in with your dry. So I'm going to put your one cup in. The general rule is you have one heaping tablespoon of baking powder per cup. So if you're going to make a bigger batch of scones, you're going to want to use probably three cups of flour and three tablespoons of baking powder. So I'm going to drop that in there, and then we're going to just get this out of the way. So what you want to do, oh, I don't know if they can see. Can you bring the, I was thinking. Bring the camera right in here. Yeah. Okay. So you're going to have your, I'm going to give it a little mix. So this is what your flour and baking powder will look like. The white in the middle is your baking powder. The rest is the flour. You give that a good mix. And then... You're gonna to wanna to create a little volcano type area. And that's where your liquid's gonna go. So I'm using buttermilk. Buttermilk, buttermilk will make your scones a little bit more, um, not fluffy, but like softer, like bread. Should be. <laughs> so we're gonna throw this in. And I don't really measure anything, so I would say start with half a cup of liquid. So we're just gonna throw that in here. Oh, I didn't can't shake it up. Come on, guys. Always remember, shake your buttermilk, it separates. <laughs> As we can see, it just happened to us here. There we go. And if it gets too sticky, you can always just throw a little bit more flour in. You want your dough to kind of be like a Play-Doh-y texture. Not like this is too sticky to roll out. It'll stick to your hands, it'll stick to your table. So we're just gonna throw a little bit more in at a time. Some people like to put a dash of salt in. Um, I typically don't use salt. Uh, Really, it's because normally when I'm making this, I'm making it for ceremonies. And when we make fry bread for ceremonies, we don't put salt in our food. So um, keeping that in mind, if you're making things for ceremonies, you don't use salt and you do not use vanilla because vanilla contains alcohol. So this is what your dough should look like when you're ready to roll it out. So you're gonna to wanna to dust your surface, drop your dough, dust your dough a little bit here, and then you're gonna to wanna to knead your dough just as you need any other bread. And with this, um, if you have a bigger batch, you can actually just use a cookie cutter, cut them to whatever size you would like them to be um, this guy is going to get thrown in the oven so you can see what your oven bread should look like when it's done. Um, preheated the oven to 350. That's generally what I like to use to cook my bread. Some people will say to use, um, like a lower heat setting, 290. Um, some people go even lower than that, cook their bread a little bit longer. So I'm just going to throw this. I'm going to just throw a teensy bit of flour in here so it doesn't stick. And then I'm going to take this, and then you'll see your bottom will be flour from your table. I'm going to drop that in here, and we're going to throw this in the oven. And then I'm going to mix up a little bit more, and then I will show you what frying looks like, uh, how to tell when your scones are done, when they're ready to flip. So I will be back with you guys momentarily. Take a quick look at your bread so now you can see that it's rising that is your baking powder at play when this becomes like a nice golden brown then you know your bread is done so we'll be showing you as we go what your bread will look like as it's baking all right so i'm gonna pull the bread out here this is what your bread should look like this is actually a little bit more brown than i would have liked but your bottom should look nice and brown and that is your oven bread. Normally this would be about two, 
on each slide there. You could probably fit six or eight in this pan, depending on the size that you use. Um, and then we will be showing you how to fry bread in just a few minutes. <laughs> So here's our oven bread. I just showed it to you guys and I pulled it out. I left it in a little too long just because we had a meeting and I forgot a little bit. So <laughs> you want the bottom to be about this brown. The top should be a little bit lighter than this, but if you open it up, I'm just gonna tear into this, you have your scone and it's fluffy, it's you know soft, it's bread. It's bread. It's bread. <laughs> So now we're gonna fry them. So I'm just gonna flatten this out. You want this to be about maybe half an inch thick, maybe thinner than that, depending on how fresh your baking powder is. Because your fresher your baking powder, the more your scone is gonna rise. And ours is, is pretty fresh, so. So, when you're tapping this out, you want to go, to get it uniform, you want to start in the middle and flatten out towards the edges so your edges are not thicker than your middle. Okay, so I have a little cookie cutter here. Drop your cookie cutter in your flour because you don't want your cookie cutter to stick. Go as close to the edge as you can. Just because you go close to the edge and then it gives you more dough to work with. So you're not wasting dough. And then once you have these all cut out, you can always re-knead your dough, start over again, flatten it out and get more out of your stuff here. Stuff. Mm -hmm. Dough. Yep. <laughs> So these would be um, biscuits, basically. This is something that you typically would see um, in Haudenosaunee communities. So your fry bread, so I'm gonna do one fry bread and I'm gonna do the, the scones. So your fry bread would be more, this would be something for like your tacos. Um, or you can, I, I know one girl, it's, uh, my daughter's friend. What she does is she uses powdered sugar on top and then she puts mashed strawberries and whipped cream on top. It's really good. Mm. So this is what your, your fry bread would look like. It would be flat and that will still kind of uh, rise up a little bit. So then we would put it in our oil. Now our oil has been preheating to 350. Um, you fill about half line. This is just a, an electrical fryer. So you fill it to the half line and then you just drop your stuff in. Um, you could also, if you're doing the biscuits, you could actually drop less oil in and then you would have where it would be like half in, half out kind of thing. Um, in that case, when you are ready to flip your, your scones, your top will have risen and it'll be like a mound and it'll be smooth. So it won't look like this. It'll be rounded up a little bit. It'll be nice and smooth and your bottom will look really brown. You might even get some kind of like an air pocket almost on the top. So we're just gonna put these in and let this fry up. And then we will talk a little bit about some of the other things you can do with fry bread. Okay, I don't have enough room for these ones. <laughs> so another thing you can do, so you would take a piece of fry bread about this size. I'm just gonna flatten this guy out for us here. You would flatten it out as much as you can. And then once you have it nice and flat, you would put a hot dog in the middle. You would wrap it over the hot dog and then kind of stretch it out as much as you can. Use a little bit of water or milk to seal your edges. So it would be at the bottoms and then where your fold ends, like it would be like this with the hot dog in the middle, where your fold ends, you would seal that. And then you would fry it the same way or you can bake it the same way. We call that scone dogs. 
it's actually quite delicious. Um, there are some ceremonies that we do that call for your scones to have um, blueberries or maybe honey or something like that to sweeten it up a little bit. Some people will add sugar to their scones just to kind of make it like a, not sweet, but just a, it's just a different taste to it. Um, again, I'm, I'm used to the old school way because a lot of the times that I'm making stuff like this, it's, it's because of ceremonies or there's a death in the community, something like that. So we don't, we don't typically use salt in those. Um, another thing is, so once you're done rolling out your scones, like I just did a small batch, so I don't really have too much going on here, but you, you will typically have dough stuck all over your table. So you would just take a scraper, I'm just using a metal scraper, you could use a plastic scraper. You scrape that stuff off, it makes your cleanup way, way easier. So this is something that my mom always does. We, uh, we used to have a bakery when I was a kid, so this was something that we did quite often. She would use a pastry cutter, so if you guys know what a pastry cutter is, um, not, the, not the one with the rings in it. Those are, those are used for mixing, but like an actual, it almost looks like a paint knife. Again, don't know if you guys know what that is. <laughs> so like a drywalling knife type thing, it almost looks like that, but it'll have like um, ticks on it or it'll have like a sharp edge. You could use one of those. Um, those are used for cutting your pastry. They're used for cutting bread. Um, one of the reasons why, especially when you're making scones, um, if you rip your dough, sometimes it won't rise. There's other things that can happen. So you don't want to ever rip your bread. So what happens when you rip dough is you break down the gluten strands in your dough. So a lot of people talk about gluten-free, um, not wanting to eat gluten. You can't do that when you're making scones because you're using white flour. So when you're making this type of bread, you do not want to rip it because you'll break down that gluten strand. We're gonna check our stuff out here. Grab another wooden spoon. I threw that one in the sink, didn't I? Yeah. Oh, I have. I have tongs. Yay. So we're gonna check that out. It's slightly browning there, so that you you want to leave that. You want this to be stiff when you're ready to flip them over. Um, same with these guys. These guys are not quite brown enough to flip. Um, that one's still really doughy. This is one of the first ones I put in. That one's almost ready, if you can see that. So you wanna leave that for a bit longer still. You want it to be a nice golden brown, and then you'll be able to flip it. And then once the other side's golden brown, you should have done bread. How long does it take approximately? Um, usually about five or 10 minutes a side, depending on what your your uh, temperature looks like. So again, this one's at 350. If you're cooking on a stove, the reason I like to use these is because you know that your temperature is being maintained. But if you use a stove, uh, not so much with, with an electric stove like the one we have here with the rings on it, you usually will get a nice even heat with these and it maintains the temperature. But if you're looking at a gas stove that has flames, a lot of times you're adjusting. So you're adjusting your flame, you're turning it up, you're turning it down, just to kind of maintain your heat. And you can never really check unless you actually stick a thermometer in there and take a look at what your your uh, grease is at. With these guys here, you'll always know because there's a, a dial on the side that tells you how much heat you've got going on. So I'm just gonna clean this area up. Another tip for people when you're cooking, clean as you go because the last thing you want is to be done and then you gotta heat the dishes in your sink and now you're like, I really don't wanna do these dishes. It falls into a cycle of soaking your dishes for three days, trust me. So we'll go back to this guy. So you can eat these with pretty much whatever you want, with jam, with peanut butter, with butter, 
Um, these are pretty good when you make soup because the crust is a little bit harder. Um, because of the stiffer crust, it soaks up your soup. It doesn't get soggy. Um, we like to kind of eat these with chicken noodle soup, chicken and dumplings, potato soup. Um, whereas these, these guys here will be more of like a ham and scone deal where you would actually cut your biscuit in half, throw some ham in there, throw some mustard on it and make a little sandwich. That usually goes good with corn soup. You see that a lot at Palo time, corn soup and ham and scone. So this guy's ready to flip. So this is what color you want this to be when you're ready to flip your scones. And sometimes your edges will be hotter than your middle. It happens. And then when you're making your tacos, what I like to do is, so you have your big piece of bread. What some people will do is they'll put all of their toppings on this big piece of bread. And then they hand you a plate and you have this giant scone underneath your toppings and then you're trying to cut it and your toppings are falling off and it just turns into a big mess. I like to cut it before I make the taco. So you cut it up and then you put your toppings on. It depends on really what region you're in. So a lot of times in Canada when we do ham and scone, or sorry, when we do Indian tacos, the taco will actually be chili, cheese, uh, lettuce, tomato, onions, green peppers, that kind of stuff. But when you're in the United States, typically what you're seeing is like Mexican taco meat on top of your taco with all of your toppings on top, like an actual taco but made with fried rice. Um, some areas you'll see uh, mashed beans with meat. Um, again, with you know taco season, kind of like a burrito meat kind of thing. So that's something you know if people want to get into the comments and start sharing some recipes for what they use on their tacos, that would be great. Um, any type of other things that you might do with your scones that could be good for other people to check out. So I'm going to flip these guys over. I think they're all pretty much ready. And so you get a decently good rise on them. That's why these guys are good to cut in half for ham and scone. Whereas this guy here, not so good for cutting in half for ham and scone because he's pretty flat. Um, another thing, uh, if you want to ensure that your scone is cooked through, it doesn't hurt to throw a lid on your pot or your pan. So you put the lid on and it starts to actually cook the upper part of your scone before you flip it. So that's something, you know, little tips and tricks that I will share with you guys. I will not ever give out my secret ingredient, which Sebastian keeps trying to get for me, but it will not happen. He's tried every time we make scones. He's like, so, what's the secret ingredient? And I'm like, I'm taking it to the grave. What is the secret ingredient? <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking it to the grave. <laughs> so when I made these, I used buttermilk. So buttermilk is, it, it allows your, your bread to be a little bit moister, to be a little bit softer. You can use regular milk, you can use water, doesn't hurt. Um, what I like to do with regular milk, um, you don't get the same effect with water, but with regular milk, you get your cup, you whisk your cup, you can use a fork, you can use a whisk, you, you whisk that, that uh, milk and you get the air bubbles into it and then you mix it in. It helps create an air bubble in your, not an air bubble, but it helps create like a more buoyancy in your, in your bread. So your bread will typically be a little bit more fluffier. These guys look like they might be cooking a little too fast, but I'm just gonna turn this down a titch. So I'm gonna turn this down to 300, just because it feels like it might be cooking a little too fast. And if it cooks too fast, what'll happen is the outsides will get really dark and they'll look burned. And then when you open it up, your inside will still be doughy. 
and nobody wants it, though it's gone. Mm -mm. There's so many inappropriate jokes that came to mind that I can't say. <laughs> So I'm just gonna clean up here. Okay, so we've pulled this guy out. This is what he looks like. This is what the inside of your scon should look like. There's no doughy parts. And then, just cause we left them in just for a few minutes, so we got the camera set back up. It's a little bit darker than the other side, but they are done. Um, if you notice as I'm pulling them out, they are a little bit bouncy um, that's from using the buttermilk so we're gonna put these on some paper towels there's another one behind you if... oh, okay so we're gonna put these on the paper towels to soak the grease up that way your bread is not super oily we also have a couple more on here just because they were the ones that were left over that we threw in there just to get them done. So these guys will finish cooking up. So that is how you make fry bread. It's quick, it's easy, it's cheap. Um, you can do it with just the staples in your house. Normally we all kind of have baking powder and, and flour. So um, it's something I typically would give to my youth um, I'm a youth and transition worker, so uh, a lot of times when we're doing cooking, which is a, a, something they all want to do, they all want to learn how to cook, they all want to be able to feed themselves. Um, this would be one of the things that I would teach them to live independently. Um, I remember when I learned how to make scones, I was maybe 9 or 10 the first time I made my own batch, and my grandma was like, okay, now you can get married. So it's kind of, it's something that we should all know how to do. You never go hungry if you have flour and water. You never go hungry. So, um, yeah, so this would be one of our basics. Uh, we use it in a lot of our ceremonies. We use it in a lot of um, social gatherings, stuff like that. Uh, I do want to kind of touch base a little that um, if you guys tuned into the Indian cookie recipe that we did, Again, that's something that we use in ceremonies, but these are not our typical uh, traditional foods. So they are deemed traditional foods. They are thought of as traditional foods. The reason that these came to be is with the ration system. So what happened, you know, back in the day when we all got put onto into the reservation system, um, we were given rations, which was. Um, just a kind of a box of things that the government decided that we were able to have just to keep us alive. So one of the things that they gave us was white sugar. Um, they gave us white flour. They gave us lard. Um, we kind of had to take from what we had and figure out how to survive. So normally we would make this with uh, corn flour and it would be boiled. It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fried in anything. Uh, we weren't much for frying foods in, in fats. So um, if you were to see a wheel of cornbread or even like a, a cornbread log, um, that's, that would be our traditional food. So that would be our bread. But because we weren't able to get that and this is kind of what we were given, we kind of had to adapt to that and then fried bread was born. Um, I know some, areas they actually cook the bread over an open flame it's really good um other areas there's different ways there's different ways to cook it there's different things that they put in it um so it's kind of one of those things that stretch across the nations we pretty much all have fry bread in some shape or form so yeah so that's just a little history on our fry bread as we're waiting for it to cook So these guys are kind of touching the bottom a little bit. You see that it's a little bit more brown than the first time around. Another thing will happen is your bread will actually soak up the oil. So if you end up having to make a whole lot of this and you notice that like with the, there's no buoyancy in your oil anymore, they're not floating, 
it's fine. It's totally fine. But if you notice that there's hardly any oil, and then as you can see, there's flour here along the bottom, and it starts to get a little bit brown, you're gonna wanna add more flour, more oil uh, because your scones will burn and they will not cook through. So you should always typically have about here, if you can kind of measure that. So you never want it all the way to the bottom. You want it at least maybe a quarter inch up. Or not, depending on who teaches you how to make your bread. <laughs> I've noticed that uh, families will always cook bread differently. Um, it never tastes the same as when somebody else makes it. Um, I've had many different tasting fry bread. Even if we use the same ingredients, it will always taste a little bit different. I don't know why. It's just the Uncle Holy magic, I guess. And again, sorry, I don't really measure. <laughs> so we'll recap. Um, for every cup of flour you put into your, your batter or dough, <laughs> for every cup of flour you put in your dough, you're gonna wanna use a heaping tablespoon of baking powder. Um, just to kind of even the ratio. Uh, start with about a quarter, I mean, sorry, a half a cup of liquid, depending on what you're using. Uh, you might need more, you might need less. If you find that your dough is too sticky, add a little bit of flour. Um, I wouldn't go in like cup by cup, I would go in handful by handful. Uh, because sometimes that's all, it looks like it's super sticky and then you throw a quarter of a cup in and then you got dust in your bowl. So you're gonna wanna kinda just, trial and error will help you find the best way to, to cook your fry bread. Um, not really something that can be taught in a day. Sometimes you can follow every instruction somebody gives you, your fry bread just will not turn out. Sometimes it won't rise, sometimes it's grease log, it just depends really on how you do it, I guess. Um, always make sure your oil is hot before you put your bread in. So if your oil is cold and your bread is sitting in it until it gets hot and then it starts to cook, your bread will be crunchy, it'll be full of oil, and it'll be kind of gross. Unless you're into that thing, by all means, do you. See here, this is, this is it sitting on the bottom. It starts to brown up a little bit faster than it would if it was floating. Again, it's not that big of a deal. And I would usually have a lid on it, um, but obviously they're done through, so wasn't that big a deal. Okay, so we're all done now. I have unplugged the oil. Make sure when you're using these, you always unplug it because even if you leave it, you turn the dial all the way down, it will stay on. So you wanna unplug this. Once your oil is, is cooled off, you're able to discard of your oil as you normally would. You should be able to just kind of scrape everything out into the garbage and, and wash your area. So here is our fry bread. Yummy. And then here is our oven bread. And you can see the difference between the two is definitely in the crust. So your crust will be a little bit harder if you want to hear it. A little bit harder on your oven bread. Hardly any tap in the fry bread. So, there you have it. Um, we will have another cooking workshop on Friday of next week. Um, and what are we doing Friday? We just had this meeting. I know, I can't remember. Um, yeah, so just keep tuning in with us at HRIC. We have programming every morning, every evening. We will be teaching you guys how to do different things. We'll be looking at different crafts. So keep updated. Share, share, share. Like, like, like. All that fun stuff. 
Tell your friends about us. And we will see you guys again.